Second Series, Chapter One of Little Susie's Little Servants by Elizabeth Prentice. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. I wish I knew how to sew, Susie one day said to her nurse. I wish so too, said nurse, for then you could be always making aprons and things for your babies, and in time you could make a shirt for your papa. Susie smiled at this pleasant prospect. "'I'll go and ask Mamma to teach me,' said she, jumping up, "'and I'll make my dolly some frocks, and some aprons, and some cloaks and bonnets, "'and I'll make you an apron, too, Robbie.' Robbie looked as if he admired Susie very much, and began to think, as he always did when pleased, what he could give her. In the meantime their nurse had cut out a little white petticoat, and was basting it very nicely together. "'Is that for me?' cried Susie joyfully. "'Oh, nursie!' And Susie sat down, took the needle in her eager little fingers, and began to sew. "'Oh, you mustn't put the needle back and forth that way,' said nurse. "'See here, the point of the needle should come towards you.' "'Yes, I know,' said Susie, and went on sewing all sorts of ways. "'That isn't right,' said nurse. "'When you learn to sew, you ought to learn the best way.' "'This is the best way,' said Susie. "'Very well. If you know so much, there's no use in my teaching you,' said Nurse, feeling rather vexed. "'Oh, dear, here's an old, ugly old knot,' said Susie. She pulled the thread angrily, and it broke. "'Fix it for me, will you, Nurse?' Nurse joined the thread in silence. Susie took one more stitch, and her needle unthreaded. "'I can't string my needle,' said she. "'You must learn,' said Nurse. "'See, this way. "'And you needn't talk about stringing it as if it were a bead. "'Ah, well, I may as well thread it this time. "'But my, what stitches! "'Why, Dolly will fall through between them.' "'I guess I won't learn to sew,' said Susie. "'It's hard. "'Here's the needle. "'I'll put it back in your cush pinion for you.' "'My pin-cushion, you mean. "'But I should be ashamed, if I were you, "'not to know how to sew. "'There was little Mary Jones where I used to live. "'She sewed like a woman. "'Such stitches. "'But then there are few children like Mary Jones.' "'I thought you said she was the trial of your life,' said Susie. "'Well, the child's memory,' said Nurse, lifting up her hands. "'You should not notice everything I say, my dear. "'Now,' "'I'll tell you something. "'You learn to sew, and you shall make a little bag to give to your mamma, "'just such a bag as Mary Jones made for her mamma. "'Only yours shall be blue, and hers was pink. "'Come, that's a good girl. "'Your mamma will be so pleased.' "'So Susie sat down again, and took a few more stitches. "'The needle hurts me,' said she. "'That's because you've no thimble.' "'I'll lend you my silver thimble, the one your aunt gave me.' So Nurse wound a large piece of paper round and round Susie's finger, and crowded the thimble over the hole. It looked like a helmet on a dwarf. Susie took one more stitch, and sighed. "'I'm tired,' said she, "'and the thimble is so heavy.' "'Well, put your work away, then,' said Nurse.' "'and when we go out I'll buy you a dear little brass thimble, "'but not unless you'll promise to be patient and try to learn.' "'Susie promised, but her promise cost her many tears, "'for her needle unthreaded, her thread broke or got into knots, "'her hands were awkward and did not know how to behave, "'and then when she cried on her work it made it hard to sew. "'But every day her hands grew more skilful. Finding they really must learn to sew, they would not dispute about such a trifle, and you cannot think how delighted Susie was to be able, one day, to carry her mamma the nice bag she had made for her. "'Thank you, darling,' said her mamma. "'I am very glad your little hands have made this for me, and I will keep it a great while. Why, when your Aunt Laura was your age, she had made a whole quilt of bits of calico not much larger than the palm of your hand.' "'The next thing I know, I suppose you will be writing me a little letter.' "'Oh, I could never learn to write,' said Susie. "'Why not? Are not your hands just like mine? And they learned to write.' 
Susie smiled, and looked at her mamma's hands, and then at her own, but did not have time to talk any more just then. End of second series, chapter one. Recording by Hannah Mary.